Okay, so I did my project on Amos 6, 8 through 14. And before I give my presentation, I'm going to read uh, the passage to you. Okay, so it says, The Lord God has sworn by himself, the Lord God of hosts has declared, I loathe the arrogance of Jacob and detest his citadels. Therefore, I will deliver, deliver up the city and all it contains. And if it will be, if ten men are left in one house, they will die. This one's uncle or his undertaker will lift him up to carry out his bones from the house, and he will say to the one who is in the innermost part of the house, Is anyone else with you? And that one will say, No one. Then he will answer, Keep quiet, for the name of the Lord is not to be mentioned. For behold, the Lord is going to command that the great house be smashed to pieces and the small house to fragments. Do horses run on rocks, or does one plow them with oxen? Yet you have turned justice into poison, and the fruit of righteousness into wormwood. You who rejoice in loaded bar and say, Have we not by our own strength taken care and name for ourselves? For behold, I am going to raise up a nation against you, O house of Israel, declares the Lord God of hosts, and they will afflict you from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Arabah. Okay, so Amos is the 30th book of the Old Testament and is um, a Hebrew book of prophecy. Its genre is the messenger speech prophecy. Um, according to Gordon Fee, uh, most uh, messenger speeches begin with some sort of way saying that God is speaking. So um, this passage begins with the sovereign Lord has sworn himself, the Lord God Almighty, Almighty declares. And so just this just shows how... God is the speaker, and he is reminding his audience, and he has a message for his audience. Okay, so for the historical and cultural context, um, the author is Amos, and he is writing to northern Israel. Uh, God is the one who is speaking out, th is who is speaking in this passage to his people, and it takes place in northern Israel, which is seen on the map on the screen. And this all comes from the John MacArthur Study Bible. And then this book was written from 767 to 753 BC. And during this time that Amos was writing, Jeroboam II was, ki was king over Israel and he brought prosperity to them. And this is found from David Malik, who is a graduate from Dallas Theological Seminary and has a Master's of Theology in Bible Exposition. Okay, so then the people who were living in northern Israel at the time were ignorant to God, were ignorant to God because of their wealth, and they were also very idolatrous and had little respect for God's commandments. They also had a corrupt justice system and worshipped Baal, who is the god of fertility of both land animals and mankind, which is found from Nisan Mandel, who wrote the prophet of Amos Jewish history, and he was a rabbi and wrote a lot of commentaries. Um, also, prior to Jeroboam II, uh, King Jeroboam built, had built two golden calves in northern Israel, one at the northern border and one at the southern border, and when people would go to Jerusalem to worship God, they would see these um, they would see these calves and they would worship them instead, which caused um, a majority of northern Israel to fall into idolatry. And this is found from Gerald Oss, who is a professor at the Ambassador Bible Center and has an undergraduate degree in theology. Okay, and so for the word study, there are three key words in this passage which are loathe, detest, and afflict. Um, these, strong, or these words show God's anger uh, towards northern Israel. And yeah, yeah. Okay, um, this passage also mention, mentions two Syrian cities in verse 13, which were conquered by King Jeroboam. And the verse 13, 13 says, You who rejoice in Lodabar and say, have we not by our own strength taken Karnaim for ourselves? And so Lodabar and Karnaim are the two Syrian cities. Um, Lodabar means nothing. 
And then, so basically, this verse says, you rejoice in nothing, which is showing how the northern tribes um, of Israel rejoiced in meaningless wealth. And then, karnaim means horns, and so this is symbolic for uh, animal an animal strength. And so, the verse says that, the verse says, have we not by our own strength taken karnaim for ourselves? So basically, it's saying how northern Israel believed that they conquered these two cities with their own strength, which reveals the pride they had. There's also one command in this passage in verse 11, which says, For behold, the Lord is going to command that the great house be smashed to pieces and the small house to fragments. And so basically, this is just um, prophesying the destruction of northern Israel, and it's also a warning to them of God's wrath. There are also three rhetor rhetorical questions in this passage. Um, the first one comes from the first part of verse 12, which says, Do horses run on rocks, or does one plow them with oxen? And so this ironic question reveals Israel's unreasonable justicism, ju justice system, um, and then the second question from verse 12 says, and say, have we not by our own strength taken name for ourselves? And so basically, again, this just shows Israel's pride and ignorance. Um, and then verse 12, I found, um, interesting because of the wording. It says, yet you have turned, yet you have turned justice into poison and the fruit of righteousness into wormwood. And so basically, this verse. This verse describes um, this. Blah, this verse describes the corrupt state of northern Israel, and again, it mentions their corrupt justice system. It is also yeah, and it's a metaphor. The verse that I found most difficult to understand was verse fourteen, which says. For behold, I am going to raise up a nation against you, O house of Israel, declares the Lord God of hosts, and they will afflict you from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Arabah. And so, a nation refers to Assyria, which is foreshadowing because in 722 BC, Israel is conquered by Assyria. Also, um, entrance to Hamath to the brook of Arabah is just referring to Israel's northern and southern borders. And so, knowing this context, um, this verse is basically prophesying God's raising up of Assyria to conquer Israel, and his and he will call, and Assyria will cause them to suffer. And this is all found, all the word studies found from the MacArthur Study Bible. Okay, so for the overall purpose, um, my thesis statement is Amos 6, 8-14 is a messenger speech to Israel as a result of Israel's pride and foreshadows their future oppression as a result of God's wrath towards the nation, revealing God's zeal for righteousness and disgust towards pride. So this passage just shows how God abhors sin and idolatry and pride. Um, it prophesizes that God, it prophesizes how God is going to humble Israel and rid it of its idolatry and pride, showing his desire for shalom for his people. The universal truth is that God hates idol idolatry and pride, and as a result, he will punish those who participate in such things. And this is found from the MacArthur Study Bible again. Okay, so now for the application. For the group application towards the original audience, which is northern Israel, it's to tell them that God hates sin and there will be consequences for their idolatry and pride. Uh, this is, again, is found in the MacArthur Study Bible. Um, for today's application, uh, there's a quote from Matthew Henry, who, is an, who was an English minister in the 1800s, which says, Men should take warning not to harden their hearts for these who walk, for the for these who walk in pride God will destroy, and this basically sums up the application for today's people and it just show and it's basically a warning against uh pride and how we need to humble ourselves. Um, for myself, this applies to me because it reminds me to not be prideful and to do things for God's glory. 
and it convicted me while I was reading it because a lot of times I do things for my own glory, like getting good grades. I try to get good grades for like the satisfa- satisfaction for myself, but it convicted me and reminded me how I'm supposed to get good grades to glorify God and to be humble. So yeah. And then this is my works cited page with all my sources and stuff. Yay.